Manx Radio Podcasts, powered by Shaw. Women today. Chris Williams, right. tell me where Hello. you are and describe your surroundings for me. We're on a 970 ton X Cod War trawler, uh, anchored in the River Blackwater Estuary in Essex, the home of Radio Caroline, the first offshore pirate station uh, of the 1960s, and now the only existing pirate radio ship in the world. So it's quite a special weekend, celebrating or commiserating the passing of the Marine Offences Broadcasting Act, which came into force off the British coast on the 14th of August 1967. And why was the, the, the Offences Act brought in then? Why did they want to stop pirate radio? Well, there are all sorts of excuses, and I'll call them excuses <laughs> given by the British government. Uh, the Postmaster General at the time was Ted Short. The man who put the Act through Parliament was Tony Benn, and he said, amongst other things, that we were causing interference to emergency services, which was never proved and hasn't ever been proved since then. And, of course, the old issue of they're playing records and not paying any copyright, which is true. Uh, <laughs> they're, stealing, they're stealing this, that and the other and not paying any money for it, which was technically true. But uh, then again, you know, there was no other way for, for teenagers or anybody for that matter to listen to pop music apart from one hour a week on the BBC and Radio Luxembourg. And apart from that, that was it. So, you know, it's all about freedom of choice, isn't it? Well, yeah, actually, and not only that, but, um, OK, maybe not paying copyright, but if it wasn't for the pirate radio stations, a lot of the acts that are now utterly huge would just not, not be where they are if it wasn't for pirate radio, would they? No, no, that's true, because, you know, if you went to Radio Luxembourg in those days, the Station of the Stars, they only played records released on the EMI or Decca record. If you had, and think of the number of record labels you have nowadays, and uh, more so, I suppose, now people releasing their own material on the internet and, and all the rest of it, but, but they would only play recordings recorded on one of two labels. So if you're Ronan O'Reilly, who's an Irish businessman, who happens to manage Georgie Fame, and you go to Radio Luxembourg and say, will you play my artist record? And they say, no, because it's not on one of my labels or one, not on one of those two labels. What do you do? He says, OK, if you won't play my records on your radio station, I'll buy a radio station so I can play my own records. And that's exactly what he did. Which is genius, to be honest, isn't it? it really is. And he named it after a woman. Tell us about the woman. Well, the female belongs, well, the female's name uh, is that of John F. Kennedy's daughter, uh, JFK's daughter, Caroline Kennedy. And uh, we all know the history with Caroline Kennedy. And Ronan O'Reilly, the uh, founder of Radio Caroline, looked at a picture in the press and there was a picture of her underneath the desk of JFK in the Oval Office of the White House. And he said, that's good enough for me, baby. We'll have Radio Caroline. And that was it baby well so it's called radio caroline named after a lady and yet yeah. the only yeah. kind of reference certainly through this the 60s and 70s yeah, to women there doesn't seem to yeah. be for their broadcasting yeah. skills should we put it that way chris i don't think the women were on the boats for djing quite so much were they oh. <laughs> uh well hang on a minute before you go any further just remind me of the name of the program christy uh, this program is called women yeah. today chris so i have to okay, take this kind that. of slant yeah it's funny that why don't we have a program called men today? oh here uh, anyway, we go again uh, <laughs> well you know hang on a minute now look, we've, i've been doing a little bit of research into this in the last 35 seconds so yeah i've been looking into it a little bit as well and i have found mm. a couple of names there's somebody called muriel young who was on radio yes. luxembourg uh, she and went on to the BBC as well. Yeah, that's right. And she was she was she was a, a female announcer on British commercial TV, and then went on to Radio Luxembourg in sixty one. And uh, a couple called Candy and Susan Calvert, who were somehow attached to Screaming Lord Such. I'm not quite sure about that, but those are the only names I found. Well, they were the daughters uh, of Reg Calvert, who owned Radio City. The Tower of Power, which Calvert was uh, shot dead by Oliver Smedley in the 1960s, and that's one of those great sort of scandals which saw the end of the pirates, and that's one of the reasons why the Offshore Broadcasting Act was passed by the British government, because things were getting a bit silly. People were throwing Molotov cocktails off towers and trying to uh, steal other people's boats, and it all became a bit messy in the end, in the 60s anyway. Oh, my word. So, OK, so is it then maybe fair to say that perhaps pirate radio wasn't the best environment for a woman to be in? Well, I think that's some of it. And uh, as we mentioned earlier, I think that, you know, women just generally in those days weren't in weren't doing radio. You know, you didn't get uh, Adrian Smith from the housing estate down the road. who was a DJ on the on the radio stations. Generally, they were pretty well off or their families were well off or they were well connected. But that's maybe a different issue altogether. I can throw a shot across your bow, though, if nice. you want me to. 
Nice, like that. There's a lady who used to work for an off radio station in the 70s called Radio North Sea International. And I'll give you three guesses if you can guess who that was. Okay, uh, let me think. Um, I'm going to say somebody like uh, Annie Nightingale, maybe someone like that? Incorrect. Okay, well, in that case, have I got a guess again? I've got a guess no, again. No, did you give up? I give up. Louise Quirk. <gasps> of course, our own Louise Quirk. And she was one of the, the, the first <laughs> young female DJs, wasn't she? She used to uh, do overnight programmes for RNI on the Mebo 2, which was a legendary pirate of the 70s. Because, of course, it did launch <laughs> the careers of, of some like top DJs, like Sir Tony Blackburn, John Peel, Kenny Everett as well. So, you know, it's nice yeah. to see it launch the career of Louise Quirk as well. Absolutely, yeah. Louise, uh, yeah, she was a friend of uh, Daffy Don Allen uh, in the 60s, and he uh, also did some work for Manx Radio, funnily enough. When uh, Radio Caroline North left uh, Manx Shores in 1968, uh, Don Allen did some work for uh, Manx Radio along with the likes of Paul Burnett. Uh, and I think it was Don Allen who introduced Louise Quirk, and the, and the rest, is, for, from a point of view, is history. But I'd love to hear her story. <laughs> We should do that sometime. We should. We definitely should. And what about um, the, the playlists themselves then? Because um, obviously the industry itself may be quite male-dominated, but music itself mm. was probably quite male-dominated as well, wasn't it? Were there many women that were played on the on the pirate radio ships music-wise? I think in the 60s you had uh, probably half a dozen superstars that you could probably name them on two hands, which were because they produced such good records, got played so often. You know, the likes of um, Sandy Shaw... Petula Clark, Lulu, uh, there's three of them for starters. Then you've got I can, you know, Tina Turner uh, with Ike and Tina Turner. Um, that, and there's several more, I'm sure, but, uh, but they're the ones that spring to mind. So, yeah, because, because they produce good records and good records make good radio. I, I should also address something that uh, was featured quite heavily in The Boat That Rocked. Uh, there's a lot of suggestion from that film, oh, which I know, is not, no. I know is not 100% true, but Johnny Walker has also we sort of alluded to this, that women well, were uh, brought on board for for, shall we say, entertainment purposes. I don't have any proof of that whatsoever. <laughs> and it's not and just that. I'm not saying that because I'm a bloke and I wasn't there and I wish I was or anything to do with that. Uh, the, the scenes in the boat that rocks where the, the boats turn up with the ladies throwing knickers at people and saying, oh, I love you and, and all that rubbish. Uh, it was a, it, it, I think it was glorification on the, uh, on the part of the film director. But look, listen, it, let's face it, these guys were superstars. You know, yeah. millions and mi millions of people listen to these guys. So, so you can understand that. That's nothing to do with uh, sexual inequality. To you. That's just the way the the human race is. You know. Uh, so, so don't try and turn that one on me. <laughs> <laughs> and incidentally, by the way, here's a question. Here's a here's a, a, a statement for you. Why shouldn't we go out as us boys, men, and have a good time? Oh, I, I love that you were cut off in your prime in the middle of that statement there. <laughs> oh, oh, no. We'll have to do it again. Oh, no, I think we should just leave that right there, Chris Williams. Let's leave oh, it right there. Okay. Uh, tell me what is coming up then after Women Today at 3 p.m. Got a big show. Uh, for the first time in, in 50, oh, hang on a minute, 50 years, 50 years, we'll have Radio Caroline North, Radio Caroline South, and Manx Radio. So they're the three longest running independent commercial radio stations in the British Isles, all on the air at the same time, along with BBC Radio Essex. Uh, so that's going to be the end of their BBC Pirate Radio Essex weekend uh, with um, uh, some boys from there. And uh, we're just going to have a chat and chew the fat about what happened in the 60s and what's happening with Carol line now of course because we're into phase of broadcasting for radio caroline which is very very exciting so i'll have more details on that later fantastic well chris it's been lovely to talk to you the other thing to work to mention is that there is a lady on board today from the bbc who's a producer so we have a woman on board a predominantly male dominated ship for the first time in probably 30 years so you're basically saying there is a token female and she's not in the kitchen isn't that wonderful no, what I'm saying is I think that the, the, the <laughs> situation has changed slightly yeah, now and yeah, we've yeah. moved on, Christy. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Chris. All right, then. Well, listen, you go uh, you have fun. You get back fun. to your kitchen sink. Fine. You go have fun playing with engines and things and uh, Thank you. <laughs> enjoy. And we will look forward to hearing the show at 3 p.m. Thank you very much, Chris Williams. See you. Bye. Bye. Don't sit in the slow lane. Join the fast lane right now with Shaw's all-new Superfast Plus Broadband. Enjoy more bandwidth, amazing speeds and the best value on the island from just £23.95 per month. 
So don't be left behind. Get a piece of the high speed action with Superfast Plus Broadband from Shaw. For details, visit our stores in Douglas, Ramsey, and Port Erin or click Shaw.com. Love being Shaw. Terms and conditions apply.